What's up, traders? Anthony Crudelli here. Are the Bulls back? And after today, I'm starting to think that the Bulls might be back. And we're going to go to the charts and look at the E-mini S&P. We're going to look at the E-mini NASDAQ and the E-mini Russell. And I'm going to go over what I'm seeing and how I'll be trading over the course of the next several days until something possibly changes again. So before I get into everything, just want to remind everybody that we are looking at futures charts when we're looking at S&P. I know a lot of you might be trading SPY. Uh, and for this, we're trading the futures. ES1 exclamation point. Talk about the NASDAQ is NQ1 exclamation point. Uh, and RTY1 exclamation point. Now there's also micros for these products. These are the full size products. Uh, and micros are just one tenth the size. So for an E-mini S&P, which we'll focus on today, it's $50 a point. A micro is MES, and that's going to be one tenth the size. So that's five bucks a point. And also want to mention here on TradingView, you can see at the bottom here, TradeStation with that green light, you can trade. Uh, if you're a TradeStation customer, uh, right here on TradingView. And if not, I would just go to TradeStation.com slash Anthony. And it gives those of you that are going to potentially be new customers at TradeStation, if you want to trade on TradingView, an opportunity to go in uh, and get a little bit of a deal on your commissions, 50% off of the commissions if you go to Anthony, uh, TradeStation.com slash Anthony. Now, let's take a look at what we're seeing here on the daily chart. So I'm going to be looking at the dailies. And I've talked about this uh, maybe it was just a week or so ago, I talked about how my neutral, which comes in at 4500 and a quarter, so 4500.25, and that's a key level for me. And that's my yellow on my beacon indicator, which is free and open source on TradingView. Uh, also got my Bollinger Bands, uh, which are 20 period, three standard deviation, and then I don't have the middle Bollinger Band, this middle red uh, moving average here is just a 10 day moving average. And uh, uh, actually, I'm sorry, the five-day moving average. I look at the five-day moving average because I want to keep a real close, tight look on trend. And anytime that we have mean reversion in a bull or bear market, when you see daily closes and staying below the five-day moving average, which you can see here in the chart, you really want to have a tight moving average because um, the wider the moving average, the more cloudy the look is going to be for day traders, right? And so with a five-day moving average, I have an opportunity to really hone in on the last five days of trading moving average uh, prices uh, and what that trend looks like. And so the five-day moving average uh, is coming in pretty much right around my neutral. It comes in at 44.99 and a quarter versus 4,500 and a quarter uh, for my neutral. And we did get a daily close above that today. And then we'll also go over here and I'm going to add my auto anchored VWAP. Um, it's way down there. And the auto anchored VWAP is a VWAP auto anchored to the opening print of the year. And to me, it's just a really good test of what, what the market's doing for the year. And as you can see, we're well above it. We're 4185 roughly to 4505, just to make it even numbers. Uh, it's well, well above it, uh, hundreds of points above it in the S&P. And so when you look at that, you look at the big picture and you say, okay, bulls are still in control uh, on the big picture, but over the past week or two, they've not been in control. Below the five-day moving average, had some closes below my neutral of 4500. Uh, and then today comes, right? I was actually short. I was long some puts earlier today. And I actually, even though today on my short-term stuff uh, set up as a trend up day, I still had some shorts uh, for a swing position because I was thinking the market could start to expand lower. And I got I covered everything uh, once we started to stabilize above 4,500. And so now I'm actually looking at this saying the bulls could be back in the S&P. They could be back. Let's take a look um, at the other markets now. And I want to pull up the NASDAQ next because in order for the bulls to be back, we need to see all of the indices, the indexes, whatever you want to call it, participating together. And what I mean by this is I don't like seeing pullbacks, mean reversions like we've seen, and then you get a daily close in the S&P back above my neutral and the NASDAQ, which has been the upside leader, and the Russell we'll look at next, 
not follow through. We need to see them follow through for me to say the bulls are back. And you can see my neutral in the NASDAQ comes in at 15,375. That's my yellow, right? Red's resistance, blue support, yellow's neutral. And so we're still 100 points away from that in the NASDAQ. And it's just re really just touching the five-day moving average and just squeaked a little bit above it today on the close. So the NASDAQ to me in the short term, still a little bearish, right? Not getting that daily close above where I want and just barely above the five-day moving average with that five-day sloping down still. Then we go to the Russell. Russell is just above the neutral of 1925, okay? It's trading 1930-ish. And the five-day is 1939, it's below it. And so it's really, it's above the neutral but not above the measly five-day. So it's not really, the bulls are not really back there either. So you've got S&P where I would say, yeah, bulls are showing some signs but the, uh, uh, of coming back, but the NASDAQ and Russell have not. And so what does that indicate to us? It indicates that most likely it's a two-way tape still. We're in the middle of August and we're around the neutrals and all the indexes. And we have the S&P creeping above, the bulls coming back, but no follow through with NASDAQ and Russell. So how do we trade it? How we trade it is two-way tape. Tomorrow I'd be slightly more bullish, about 4,500 in the S&P. Any days that we open up above 4,500 in the S&P, I'm gonna be a little bit more bullish, especially if we're above that five-day moving average as well. Keep a close eye on that NASI, a close eye on that Russell. Might start to see S&P lead them to and they start to come back up higher, uh, which would indicate the possibility of the bulls really being back, and you can see an accelerated rally. But if the NASDAQ doesn't regain my neutral and the Russell doesn't regain its five-day moving average, then what do you have? Then to me, you just have a two-way tape. S&P might get a little ahead of itself on a rally and come back down. So if I'm playing it long, I'm covering quick. And I'm also not afraid to get back short again if we get back below 4,500. We get back below 4,500, let's just say we open up below 4,500 and my day trading strategy is telling me to be a little bit short, then I step in and I look a little bit short. And so 4,500, albeit uh, it is a round number and, and I'm sure a lot of people are actually looking at these round numbers, it is important on my strategy. It's just not a round number I'm pulling out of a hat. And right now the S&P is key because the bulls are somewhat back in the S&P, but they don't have support from the Russell. They don't have support from the NASDAQ. One market I didn't mention was the Dow. And so I'll pull up the Dow and the Dow just looks totally different. It's in its own world uh, right now, just right on the five day and it never got below the neutral. And because it's only 30 stocks, I don't carry it with a lot of weight. I look at Russell and NASDAQ. To me, the Dow doesn't necessarily matter as much on the scheme of things. So I just want to point that out so I don't get some comments on, well, what about the Dow, Anthony? Not as important to me, kind of just its own kind of beast. I look at the big three. To me, the big three are S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell. Uh, and so that's what I'm looking at. And so two-way tape, a little bit bullish in S&P above 4,500, but don't get carried away with uh, sitting on longs uh, for too long because I think we could have a lot of mean reversion, especially when we don't have Russell and NASDAQ getting above their areas that I mentioned. And if the Russell and NASDAQ are starting to get weak and we get back below the S&P price of 4,500, we could see selling start to accelerate. And on the outsides, those levels I'll be watching are uh, 44.13 is big support for me. It's down here. You also have that Bollinger Band starting to open up, which I think is key. You know, when you see a Bollinger Band opening up like that, and that mouth is starting to get open. If we get back below 4,500, I would not be surprised to see 4,413 come into play and get tested this month. But if all of a sudden the NASDAQ and the Russell start to firm up and we see them get above those respected areas I discussed, five days in neutrals, you could come all the way back up in the S&P and probably test 4,587 this month. Uh, you know, so 